the 2020 yard tour. We have had a few things change around here and we've had some new additions. So let me show you. Zoom! I don't actually know I'm gonna turn it around. I haven't driven this for like two years. No, a year. It's always a sass queen. It's really hard to make it go slow. <laughs> So first up on our tour are the fields and these are so important for all the horses. Um, every single one of our horses goes into the field because I just think it's really important for their minds, their bodies and first of all they have to be horses and then they are athletes. Um, so we have seven fields here. We have at the bottom two what we call the stallion paddocks which have really high fences so if we have something that's a bit unsure about being turned out we can put them in there um, and we did once have a stallion that's why they're named stallion paddocks. And then we have the bigger fields, which are the ones up here. Um, so we're coming into winter now, so the horses will have less turnout just because the uh, ground gets slippy, um, the fields get turned up quicker. So we need to kind of preserve them so they last the whole of winter, but they still go out, even if that's for an hour a day alongside their work and going on the walker, we make sure that they go out. Um, the young horses do live out overnight as long as the weather's not terrible. Um, we try and keep them out as much as possible just to keep it more natural for them um, and then in the summer they get a lot longer in the fields which is really nice uh, so yeah that's that so in this field are um, two mares so this one is actually our breed mare she's called paris and we have had four foals from her so far um, her oldest one actually just went and won a medium yesterday with 75 percent so that's really special so she's producing some really nice horses the other mare is actually her second foal, obviously not a foal anymore, she is five. Um, she unfortunately had a pretty bad injury, uh, so we were hoping to turn her into another brood mare because she's really special and really lovely. Um, but unfortunately she didn't take this year, so we're gonna try again next year. So these two are what we call the brood mares, but she's not been a brood mare yet. Uh, so yeah, they spend most of the day out in the fields because again, they, you know, they're not being ridden. So they will spend from seven o'clock until three-ish in the fields and then come in and in the summer they stay out overnight. So yeah. Oh, this is Belle by the way, and that's Paris for names. Good girl. So I am now on the canter track and this is where we um, start the horses off before they get worked. So we uh, walk them around, warm them up. And then after they've worked, we walk them around again. I just think it's really nice to get them out of the arena when they're cooling off. Uh, we also do canter them, not up this bit, because there's a bit of a corner, um, but on the other side, there's a really nice slope which you can canter them up, which is really good for their strength. And yeah, it's just really fun. So that's where we are now. So this is our brand new feature on the yard. I'm gonna run down, go in there and show you guys. Go, 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 go. Have the weirdest run. So this outdoor was actually finished last week, hence why the grass hasn't grown around the outside yet. Um, but we were so excited to get this because it's already helped the horses. Uh, the problems I was having from just training them inside is when I went outside to compete them, they were a little bit spooky, a little bit unsure and nervous. So it's been a really good tool to have to be able to bring them outside at home, train them outside and they've got more used to it. It's also really interesting because the boards aren't very high so you have to really control that outside of the horse well. Um, but yeah, I'm absolutely loving it. It's really nice as well to be able to train in the sunshine before the winter hits. Um, so yeah, it's been amazing. So now we're gonna head into the main barn to see some of the horses and some of the other places we have. So let's go and see some of the horses first. Da -da 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 -da. So first up is Eagle. Hi sweetheart. Hi. So uh, Eagle is a 11 year old gelding. His show name is Mercian Agena. We've had him since he was two uh, and he is now working, competing into one and training 
at Inter 2. Um, I think he's going to be ready to do his first Inter 2 in a couple of months, which is really exciting because uh, I actually didn't think he was going to make it to that level, uh, which sounds really mean, but I just wasn't sure he was going to be talented enough, but he's such a trier. Um, he, I call him digestive because he's like sort of plain and a bit boring, but tries so hard. Um, and he's, yeah, really, really sweet. Uh, Character-wise, he's not that affectionate. As you can see, he's trying to nip me. Um, he kind of keeps himself to himself, but yeah, we love having him around. So this is the most well-known horse, um, King Sausage, or his actual name is Wilfred, but he got called Sausage and then he got called King Sausage. And his show name is Mercy and Calisso. He is 13 years old and he's a gelding. Um, I have had him since he was a five-year-old. He's definitely been the hardest horse I've had to train. Uh, he's quite quite tricky mentally and also physically. He might look really bulky and big, but he's actually quite weak over his back. So it's been really tough for us. Um, people always said when he was younger that he'd never really make it up the levels, but he is actually a Grand Prix pony. Yeah, you are. Uh, and we did our first Grand Prix at the beginning, no, the end of last year. No, the beginning of this year. Yeah. Um, and we've done two Grand Prix. We've actually got one next weekend as well, which is so amazing. Um, that we get to experience that together. So yeah, that is King Sausage. No, sorry. Oh, I woke her up and now I feel really mean. Uh, B, that's not good. Uh, so this is B, who is um, Paris's, who is our broodmare. It's her third foal. Um, so she is a four-year-old now, and she is such a little character. She's quite small, um, but she's like a little firecracker, and I absolutely love riding her. Um, if you were watching her from the ground, you'd be like, wow, she's quite like whizzy and like looks quite scary to ride, but actually she's safe as houses. Um, she goes like cantering in the stubble fields, and she's just amazing. Um, she has taken a little bit, a, like a while to develop in her canter, um, so I haven't done too much with her yet because I'm just waiting for her to come a little bit more uphill, but she's really exciting. Um, definitely one to watch for the future and also I just love riding her. So yeah, it's great. Sorry I woke you up, sorry. So I know you shouldn't have favorites, but <laughs> he is definitely, I don't want to say he's my favorite, but he is, he is. Um, so this is Zach, who is Paris's first foal. So he's our first ever homebred. Um, he's by a stallion called Blue Horse Zach, and he is incredible, like phenomenal. I mean, my mum was so shocked that we actually bred such a good horse first time around because it's, um, you know, it's kind of, well, with breeding, it's sometimes potluck whether they come out good or not. So we were just so happy that we bred such a special horse. Um, he actually did his second medium yesterday and scored 75%. And that's pretty incredible for a six-year-old. Uh, and he's just amazing, like so talented, definitely Grand Prix potential. Uh, he hasn't been easy though. He's quite a sharp, sensitive horse. Um, and he struggles quite a lot with uh, being insecure and it comes out in like a bolshiness. So he had a very good thing of locking his door and running off, which was always fun. Um, I definitely doubted whether I was gonna be able to ride him when he was four, but we've worked together and my trainer has really helped me to understand him. And yeah, he's really coming into his own now. So I'm very, very excited for the future with him. So this is Joey and his show name is Jolito, but he is, well, I don't want to say most commonly known because he's not always naughty, but when he is naughty, he gets called Smokey Joe. So my trainer actually named it him one day when I was having a lesson, he was being a bit cheeky. He was like, now, now, Smokey Joe. And anyway, it just stuck. I think it's hilarious. So when he's cheeky, he gets called Smokey. Um, he doesn't look very impressed with that. So he is a six-year-old, same age as Zach, I and mean, they're actually best friends, so they go in the field together, and they have done since they were two, which is so cute. Uh, he is not as um, developed in his training as Zach, just because he struggles a little bit more. He's quite a chunky monkey, um, and he really struggled to find the strength, to find the suppleness. So I've taken it slower with him, and I've trained him in a little bit of a different way, in a more relaxed way, so he actually does quite a lot of jumping. Um, I found that that's really helped him in his contact. It's also how we get his flying changes. And I'm just not competing him at the moment um, until he feels a little bit stronger and ready for it. I just don't think there's any rush with them. Um, he'll come in his own time. But yeah, he's, uh, he's an interesting character to train. 
he, when he doesn't understand something, he really loses the plot. But when he knows what's going on, he's uh, a right sweetheart. So uh, yeah, he is fun to ride. Good boy. So this is Barbie and her show name is Gold Digger, uh, which I thought was genius. Um, we bought her, actually she was born only like an hour up the road at a place called Nibley Stud. And we bought her as a foal. Um, Joey, stop that. Uh, and yeah, she is a very big horse, so we're taking it nice and slow with her, but hopefully we'll get her going to some arena hire soon. Um, Character-wise, she's extremely sensitive, really listens to you. Um, she has got a little bit of thoroughbred in her, and I think that's why she's really, really sensitive and on the ball. Um, but yeah, she's a right poppet as well, and yeah, hopefully she'll do good things in the future. So this is our feed room. We have the feed bins here, which contain all the feed. Uh, the buckets, which are already made up. So that is their morning feed. And then in the bucket is their nighttime feed. Uh, on the back wall are spare buckets and also um, supplements. Uh, but that's basically it. We have a board up there with feed, but don't look because it's my mum's writing and it's really messy and it stresses me out. Yeah, but anyway, that's the feed room. So now we're gonna go into the brand new tech room, redesigned by moi. Um, but before we do, these are plaques from different things. So these are the full grading. Some of them are the nationals, regionals. That was a CDI. So when I was riding for Great Britain, I think I did have a few more of those, but I lost them. Yeah, there were more of these, but I don't know where they went, but yeah, it's cool. Oh, and there's one, an add-in from CDI, which was cool. So yeah. Um, so here it is. Just bear with the green, right? Because when mum was like, let's paint the tack room green, I was like, are you kidding? But because it's masonry paint, I think that's how you say it. We only had like a choice of four colors and we had white before. Didn't want to go with that one. We painted out their gray, didn't want to go with that one. And so it was green or this like grungy sandstone. So we went for green and I actually think it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, bear with it. Uh, we switched stuff around. So first of all, we'll start with this cabinet, uh, which is from IKEA, uh, and it's really cool. So um, we can put all our stuff stored away really nicely, and then we can have, uh, you know, like plaques and stuff up top and a few pictures. This is brand new as well. So this is where we clean the saddles, and it's so cool um, because we just found it really hard where the saddles are stored to get to get to them, and then underneath the drawer with all the tack cleaning stuff. Here are all the bridles. Um, and some fluffy head collars. And again, they're all together and neat and nice. And then what else do we have? Oh, if you swizzle. Here is my, um, how I put all my pictures. Cause they used to be in like really old frames dotted all over the place, but I wanted them in a neat place. And also, so they're protected. So they're behind this plasticky thing. Um, and yeah, it's really cool. It's nice to look back on all the memories and you have Sausages, sashes. That's really hard to say. Uh, I say he was naughty. He did one. He did win one thing, which is here. Um, and then table and chairs, which we actually got from Marketplace for fifteen pounds. Uh, and then we have a board with stuff uh, with all the horses, veterinary stuff on there, and a lot of snacks. And I think that's everything in here. So yeah, I love it. Look at this little picture. This is how not to go over a fence, right? But in fairness, in my defense, there's a slope there, hence why I'm leaning back. I wasn't just rubbish at jumping. But yeah, that was cute. Cute picture, cute memories. So this is the cross tie section. So this is where the horses get tacked up and get ready. And then next door is where they get washed off um, or have their bus getting ready for a show. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So this is the wash bay with our movable hose so we can get to both sides. Um, over here are the shampoos um, and we've got all the sponges and stuff over there. And then these shelves here are, um, again, some more shampoo stuff. All the plastic stuff is above um, and just loads of different things. We just collect things over the years. Um, so yeah, that's all that. So here are our like storage rooms. Um, so this is where we keep our feet. Uh, and then round the corner, this is travel boots and travel stuff. Uh, that is our competition trunk, which comes to shows with us. And then a very noisy, big washing machine, because we have so much washing. Uh, and then in here is our rug room. 
with lots of different rugs. My mum is rug obsessed, so there's just loads. Um, and yeah, and then there's a toilet and shower, but I don't think you guys need to see that. <laughs> So now we are at the other side of the barn. I'm going to show you guys the horse walker. So this can take six horses um, and we put them on in the morning when we muck them out. And then the ones that go in the field in the morning then would go on it in the afternoon. It's such a incredible thing to have, especially if the ground's frozen um, and they can't go out in the field. It just really helps them to move their muscles. So as you can see, these are the panels that separate the horses and they're double panels. Um, it's just a little bit safer, for example, if we had stallions or a horse that's a little bit nervous or unsure in here. It's just safer for both horses. You can also electrify them, which I think is really mean. Um, but if we have one that's biting the top of it, uh, then we do put them on for a little bit. But the bad thing is if you forget that they're on and you come to get a horse out and you get electrocuted, it's not very nice. Uh, but yeah, sort of the same thing as like having an electric fence in the field. Um, but yeah, it's been amazing. They're really, really cool. So there are some more spare stables. At the end is where we keep the straw. So half of our horses are on straw and some of them are on shaving, purely for the fact that they're really messy. They go on straw because it's cheaper. Um, so yeah, let's go and see the foals now, which are up here. And also we can visit the two-year-olds. I think all four of these are new from the last yard tour we did. So it's so we are now at the foaling box. Um, so this is where Paris has her foals and she uh, lives with them until they're around six months old, ready to wean. And then by that time, we have normally found another foal to be their bestest friend. Um, so they will get weaned with another foal so they're not alone. Um, so we'll go check out these two little munchkins. Hi guys! So first up, this is Paris's fourth foal and youngest one. Um, he is called Chief because his daddy was called Kaiser, so Kaiser Chief. And then his show name is Mercy and Messiah, which I absolutely love. Uh, he is so cheeky. He's actually better now that he's away from his mum, but he was so naughty. Um, but he's really special. Uh, oh, don't run off. And then behind him is this is little Miles. He says hi, everybody. Uh, so Miles is actually from Scotland. He's, I was going to try and do a Scottish accent, but I'm not going to. Um, and he's a right sweetheart. He's by a stallion called Millennium. I actually bought him when he was, he was really young when I bought him. Uh, and I just saw one video and I was like, I need to have this horse. Like he's phenomenal. His canter is incredible. Um, so yeah, he's really special. Uh, so these two will just uh, grow up together um, and then be back around the same time, but they'll probably be bestest of buds. Uh, yeah, they have been in the field today and I think they're going out again later. Um, but what we don't do in the winter with the foals is leave them out overnight because foals aren't very good at regulating their temperature. So we just keep them in at night in the summer. They stay out overnight. Um, but yeah, that's these two. So now I'm going to show you the indoor arena. So this is the same size as the outdoor. They're both 20 by 60, but obviously this one is undercover. Um, you can over here, you see where the windows are. You can shut them uh, if it's really stormy. We also have mirrors in here, which is really cool. This is where we do our jumping because we've got the jumps in here. There are some cavalettis, which is just the raised trotting poles, which is really good for the horses. Um, I have lots of different signs around the arena in encouragement. So that one's blessed to question because I think we're all blessed that we get to work with horses. Another one is Believe It's Possible, and that's another one of my slogans, is you've first got to think you can do it before you do it. And then at the top up there is You Got This, which is the classic slogan of Olivia Towers. Uh, it's just that little positive. Um, and then over here, this is hilarious. These are, um, so I actually do the TRT method, which is round work. Uh, and these are something that I got off the internet. It's one of the tools you can use. But it, it sparkles. So we have loads of them. I have so many memories in this arena. Um, some incredible moments where I've really overcome certain things. You know that moment where you get a certain move or you just click with your horse and you're like, yes. 
Uh, but I've also shed so many tears in here. I've been so frustrated, feel like, feeling like I had not getting anywhere, struggling with it. So um, this is definitely an important place for me, the arena. Um, I really feel like I've grown as a person, not just as a rider, but I've really learned so much about myself. I've really learned um, loads of mental skills like patience and self-discipline. So it's a very special place. So now I'll go and introduce you to the two-year-olds. They're about to go in the field overnight. So we'll just get around there before they go out. So this is one of the two-year-olds. He is called Rufus. I bought him as a foal. Um, his daddy is Reuben Royal uh, and then I can't really tell you much more about him because he's just a baby uh, and then here is Solomon but he gets called King around here because of King Solomon um, and he's really sweet. Um, both of these two were bought in the UK and we really like to support the British breeders um, because there's some incredible horses bred in the UK and me and mum just really like supporting them um, and also yeah like I said there's really good horses so yeah they will just hang out chill out together until they're ready to be back probably um, towards the end of their third year maybe early four because what we used to do is break them when they were or back them when they were three and a half but we just decided to leave them a little bit longer uh, wait for them to be a little bit stronger but yeah I'm very excited about these two so last thing to show you with the yard is the lorry. I'm not going to show you loads of detail in it because we've actually done a full video showing you guys. So we will link that below if you want to go and check it out. But yeah, this is our faithful lorry. Um, so it's got a living in for when we go to the big shows. Uh, it can fit three horses in, but we tend to just take two. Um, and yeah, it's been amazing. By the way, guys, if you want to see more behind the scenes of what goes on the yards and just the daily ins and outs, then head to my Instagram, which is towers432. I always put out daily stories and daily posts. So yeah, go check it out. Before I say goodbye to you guys, I wanted to introduce you to the last edition since we did the yard tour. This is Freddie, who also got now the nickname Tarquin. Um, but yeah, Freddie is a rescue dog from Romania. He was a year old when I rescued him. He's been here for a couple of months now and he's settling in really well, even a little bit cheeky. Um, but yeah, I'm just so glad I got to rescue a dog and give him a lovely life. So there you have it guys, that is the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed looking around the yard with us. I'd really like to know if there is anything that you'd like us to go into more details. So any area that we showed you today that you'd like us to do more about. Um, but yeah, make sure to like this video, comment below um, and subscribe to the FEI because we will be bringing you many more videos soon.